Alright guys, so now we're going to work on B3 and B4, which are going to be the parts that actually go within these C brackets here and slide up and down. So you just need the B3 bracket and the B4 bracket out of the foam with the corresponding bags underneath them and we can get started. Here we go. So I think the easiest thing to do is going to start um, one at a time here. Um, just by looking at it, it does, does look like mine came drilled pretty much dead on. You can see those two holes. So I don't think I'll be having any problems with my brass bracket. So I think this is one of the retrofit models because I actually got all the repair pieces and everything so uh, i'm gonna need some m5 by 20s which i believe are these here we'll see how it works out now and we're gonna do the first step which is just to attach the brass block to uh, this piece here so let me just go ahead actually and all the hardware we need out because there are some pieces that i keep forgetting that to grab okay so we figured it out it's gonna be these two silver ones here these two smaller just regular nuts nothing with the locking bits on them and that's what we're going to use to mount this brass block to the black piece here. So we're going to actually put the recessed spot here for the flathead screws on the outside. Put the blast brass block on this side. Then we're going to add these two pieces here. And I do believe that it's recessed so it's self-centered. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it all the way just to see what happens. Tighten that side. Grab it the other way. Oops. And then tighten both of them. So that brass block is definitely on there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the eccentric nuts, all that kind of stuff, to this part here. So we're going to put the eccentric nuts in the bigger holes like we're used to. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put the bolt here first, then the eccentric nut. Okay. Then we're going to put a brass shim, a small wheel, and I'm going to add a little bit of silicone to this. That's actually a lot more than I expected to come out, but it's going to seep down and hit the other other section of it too. And then we're going to put a locking nylon washer on here. Let's hope it reaches. I think we are good this time. It's going to reach that one. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that. What I'm using to hold the other side on the back end is just some regular pliers. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten these until it's nice and tight, or at least until it stops with like hardly any pressure. The wheel still spins freely, and we did hit the nylon, so we're doing good. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side now. We're going to add another one of these bolts, the eccentric nut, a brass shim there, a wheel or a pulley, I mean a basic little bearing. Add some silicone on it, nothing spinning like a beast. We're gonna add this one here, okay. And now, because on this part, we are going to tighten it. So it gets kind of tough to put on when it gets to that point that means that you know you're hitting the actual nylon locking part so perfect super smooth on to the next ones so if i'm a little bit out of focus here i'm sorry i'm gonna put this bolt here next a metal washer the brass shim a wheel and for me some silicone always i use these on everything and a nylon lock nut and of course we tighten this beast i'm just using some needle noses to Hold on to this while I tighten it just until I can't put any finger pressure and you feel the nylon lock. That's all you need. Last one, bolt, metal washer, brass nut, wheel, silicone, nylon. We'll tighten it now. Boom. Nice and stuck. And there we go. So we're going to go ahead and repeat that whole procedure and do the same thing for B4 before we actually mount it to some extrude. So go ahead and do B4 first. Alright guys, so after you got both, you're just going to go ahead and screw in your C brackets to both of them. I'm just going to go up to about that high. We'll check if that's the right amount later. But just to show you what I did with the other one, I uh, screw it in like this. And then I'm adding some silicone on top here. That way, it's kind of like a pool of silicone in there. I threw it in that hole there. And then uh, that way when I'm uh, putting the Z rod all the way through it, I'm going to coat the whole thing with silicone. Or the majority of it, I should say. I'm just rolling the Z rod on my, my knee. And I'll just continue to add it until it's smooth. So I'm going to run this through until it's absolutely smooth. And then I'll, I'll be right back. So after you've put the everything all set up and put the Z axis through there or whatever, or the rod, you're going to actually put this little lock collar that comes off of, out of B5. And it's going to be maybe that far off. Kind of just have to get a feel for it just so that you know it locks in to that bearing on the side here. Another way to test it is just get a bearing and then get it to where you can press it on there and it stays nice and aligned there. So that's how you know you do that. So we'll do this to the second one. So again, we'll do it on this side too. Get that locked in. 
It's, it's kind of cool that they added an extra bearing in there. So now you can set them both exactly where you need them. So I think now we're going to attach these guys to some extrude. So now we're going to take our small piece of extrude here. We're going to mount these here. So we're going to add a screw, right? It's going to be the M515 screw. I got to get the right Allen wrench for this one. Okay, I got to push them past these wheels. I should have put them in there first. There we go, this one. This should get them past it. We're just going to screw them through. Okay, be sure to put these in before the wheels so you don't have trouble like I am. Oh, actually, I guess only that one was having trouble. Okay, so now you got them through. You're going to put the screws on, and then you're going to add the brass shims, and then you're going to add your 2040 extrude here. So I'm putting the eccentric nuts facing towards me because that's where I want the adjustment to be. That way you got to set your, uh, your Z rod accordingly also. Whoops, getting there. Almost there. So now, our Allen wrench in here, we're gonna get it as tight as we can off the sides here. Boom! Okay, so there's one side, and then we can go ahead and add the second side. So, got the second extrude here, and add our two brass nuts. Okay, so, side's definitely a lot easier. You can actually kind of rotate this piece. So I think one side was. So now we're just adding the second extrude piece here. It's kind of tough to screw on there first. Okay, now we got that one in. So, tighten these really nice and tight. Good. And now we're going to attach the other side. So we're going on this one. We're going to make sure we match the eccentric nuts facing us. So we're going to pull this one this way and get them facing us here. We're going to push these all the way through again. Here we go. So get the brass. Okay, so kind of a tough part we're gonna get the brass pushing through here so this is kind of a tough one there we go got that one in there we go okay so now we got them all centered got them all centered we can screw them down now so this takes a long time almost done all right now we're all tightened up Okay guys, so now I'm just putting these through about a third of the way. And I'm trying to get the other side about as even as, as the other one because we're going to actually insert this into the printer now. Okay, I'd say we're pretty even. Uh, we're going to find out for sure when we even out the, the axes left and right. So. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to push it all the way down until the wheels hit. Okay, and then we're going to adjust our centric nuts just until they actually allow the wheels to go through. There we go. Okay, now I got this other side we have to adjust. Side's good. Okay, now we're in. I'm gonna have to compare the two sides because they're not going in evenly. So what I'm doing now is I loosen the bottom actual L brackets. So that way I, I noticed it was getting too tight on the way down. So now I'm lifting these all the way up so I can move the Z axis all the way down evenly. That way I can set the screws at the bottom so that way it actually is at the correct width. So I believe there is where we're going to want to set it. here. And this isn't working very well. Okay. Okay, so I did have to loosen the bottom um, set screws here just so I can get this to ride up and down freely. So I'm still kind of adjusting that as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and lock it where it's at. Okay, got one bearing in. Okay, so I'm having some issues with this running up and down smoothly, so I think the next best thing to do first would be to square up the machine so that it can. So we're going to start on the top section now. So.